and thank you for joining me from uh, my study here in Llanelli. And it's lovely to have your company. Thank you very much indeed for joining me today for my thought for the day, really, um, because I've been missing you all greatly. And um, I hope that you're all co coping well with the lockdown and indeed with the worry. And I'm sure that you're all trying your best to keep safe and be assured that you are all in my prayers every single day. So just a few thoughts today on um, John chapter 14, verses 1 to 12. And that reading is all about, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust in me. Well, especially in these days of pandemic, when we are all worried, I'm sure that we're all worried about all kinds of things. But we need to get these things into perspective sometimes. There's a lovely tale of a young woman in college who wrote the following letter to her parents. Her first letter in three months to her parents. And it says this, Dear Mum and Dad, I'm sorry it's been so long since my last letter, but I didn't want you to worry about the fire in the halls of residence and my concussion, which happened when I fell out of the window trying to escape. I've been anxious to tell you about the nice petrol attendant from the petrol station around the corner who made me feel comfortable before the ambulance came. I'm out of hospital now and feeling fine, especially since the nice petrol attendant offered let, to, to let me stay with him at his apartment while they were fixing the halls of residence. It's such a nice apartment and he's such a nice person. I really like him very much. And I know how happy it will make you when you know that you're going to become grandparents. In closing, let me tell you, you can stop worrying. There was no fire. I didn't fall out of the window. I didn't have concussion. I haven't moved into anyone's apartment. There's no man in my life. And you're not going to be grandparents. I told you all those things because I received a D in biology and an F in history. And I wanted you to put that into perspective. <laughs> perspective. Seeing things in their full context. Viewing facts or, or events in relation to other facts or events. Do you know from the reading from John chapter 14. We return to a conversation that took place between Jesus and his apostles on the evening of Holy Thursday. In that conversation, Jesus tells the apostles that he's about to leave them. He knows that his hour of crucifixion is drawing near. The apostles are filled with worry. Are you worried about the future, Jesus says? Do not be anxious for tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Let the day's own trouble be sufficient for the day. Let's get things into perspective. Jesus is telling you that he will support and sustain you in the concerns of a single day. Jesus is telling you that you can master the demons of worry if you confine them to a single day to get them into perspective. He's telling you to leave yesterday's guilt and tomorrow's fears to God. If you go to tomorrow and borrow worry for today, you're, you're finding that the interest is astronomical, just grows and grows. I will help you live today, Jesus promises. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in him. There was a, a, a clergyman called Norman Vincent Peale, and he was one of the first people really to write kind of books about power. And he wrote um, a book called The Power of Positive Thinking. And he used to tell a story of a woman who came to him for counselling. She was filled with anxiety and fear, worried almost out of her senses. Dr. Pale says, It seems that she had suffered a minor heart attack a few months earlier, and even though she had made a good recovery, she was overwhelmed by the fear that she might die at any moment. She kept talking compulsively about this fear until finally Dr. Pale held out his hand, palms up, and said, put it there. Put what there? the woman asked. Your problem, he said. The thing that's worrying you. I know it's invisible, 
but I know that it's genuine. I want you to stretch out your hand and place it in mine. The woman hesitated, and she put her hand in his, at which point Dr. Pale got up, walked through the door, and threw the woman's out, uh, threw the woman's fear out. Then he said, the problem is no longer in the room. It's outside the door. We need to deal with it, and we will deal with it. But first, we are going to fill the place inside you where the problem was with some thoughts of God and faith and hope. We're going to saturate your mind with the peace that Jesus Christ promised to all of us. And you will find that these thoughts are stronger than worry, stronger than fear. Do you know Dr. Pale's gesture of throwing the woman's fear of death out the door was only symbolic, of course. We'd love to be able to throw out all our troubles in some miraculous way, way, but we haven't got the power. But what we can do is saturate our minds and hearts with the presence of the one who has such power. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust in me. That's the most important decision you'll ever make about belief. And trust the living God who made you and wants you for his own. Because God loves you now. God loves you and cares for you. And because he's loving you now, you can leave yesterday's guilt and tomorrow's fears to God. If you go to tomorrow and borrow for worry for today, you're going to find the interest is astronomical. Just grows and grows. I will help you live today, Jesus promises. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in him. Even in these days of the pandemic. So, stay at home. Keep safe. And I look forward to seeing you very soon. Thank you once again for joining me.